Welcome. This is going to be a two part video. I hope you're having a great day. This is all going to help you eventually crush section 2.9. We start with a little bit of the 27 ready that will come uh, into play as we move towards two nines. So what's happening here? We're filling in the table of values uh, for each function and we're comparing. We have 3x plus 5, or you could also think of it as starting with 5. We add 3 x times. Okay. Uh, if you're really crushing it, you might know that this is a zero term. So f of zero would be five. But we'll show the work on how you would get some of these. So we know that we're plugging in where x is zero or negative one or one. Um, so the work I'm going to show over here, we might not even have to show that much when we're really crushing it, but we would say that instead of x, what are we putting in place of it? We're just putting zero, because that's what it's telling us to do here. So three times zero is zero. Zero plus five is just five. So it makes sense that the outcome here is five. What do you think the work would look like when we're plugging in here? Hopefully you're saying that x would be negative one. Three times zero would be negative three. Negative three plus five is two. So what do you think the pattern is for the rest of these? For the rest of these values? Could show the work, maybe try the work. You know what, try the work for a second and we'll take a look at what work I would have come up with. All right, super simple. It just keeps adding three over and over. So jumping from five, we add three and go to eight, then to 11, then to 14. But what do you think is gonna happen over here? With this function on the right. What looks different between these two? They both have three here and here. They both have x involved. They both end with five here and here. So let's see how this x minus one, this rate of change changes things up a little bit. So same song and dance. We'll plug in some values, nothing crazy. We'll plug in where x is negative one in parentheses here. So a little bit of order of operations, nothing we can't handle. We see parentheses before anything else. So negative one minus one, what kind of two do you think that's gonna be? Hopefully you're saying negative two. Three times negative two is negative six, add five. Okay, cool. So negative six plus five is negative one. Well, we know a little bit about the function because our rate of change is three, same as it was here. So every time we're gonna keep adding three over and over. So let's try that, where ideally we could just add three, add three again, getting to five, add three again, get to eight. I'm not showing the work for this, but it would look awfully similar to this up here. I'm just plugging in where X is that number and then just evaluating. If you're not convinced that these map to the numbers that I'm saying, feel free to try them out, show the work. But I trust that it's gonna eventually just keep adding three. And what pattern do you notice as we compare to back here? What do you notice? Do you see any values coming back again? Anything repeating? Hopefully, if you're if you have that watchful eye and you had your coffee today, you would notice that the two, five, eight, and eleven got shifted up a little bit, didn't they? Isn't that interesting? Because think the zero term, our five, how far up did that travel? Hopefully you notice that it went up one increment before it was the zero term. And now we're saying, oh, it's the first term. It kind of makes sense because we've seen these X minus one rates of change before, which would say that five is the first term here in the sequence. So where X is one, now comes five. Um, so we'll see with the other problems here and I'll leave them to you to think out how is this rate of change altering the table? 
how are these little sets of parentheses with a number, a number that's opposite of a number that might be important? Um, how are those changing boring old 3x plus 5? That's the end of this first section. I hope it was helpful. And so now looking at some 2.9 practice, again, this is assuming you've done the lab. So if you're watching this and you haven't done the lab, some of this might be a little bit uh, odd to you or different, but nothing we can't handle. So what's happening here? We're being asked to take the average rate of change between 3x plus 5 over the interval from 1 to 5. Well, as a quick sketch, we know that this would start at 5 for the zero term. The first term would then go to 8. And it would just, you know, keep on going like that. Having a graph would be nice. If you have graph paper, you're more than welcome to graph it out. But uh, we'll see how we can get a hold of this rate of change, even if we don't have the visual. So we know we're going from where x is 1 to where x is 4. So we need two things. We need to find f of 1, and we need to find f of 4. So pretty easy to just plug in where x is 1. The work looks like this. 3 and 5 gets us 8. f of 4, 3 times 4 plus 5. It's really just 12 plus 5, which is really just 17. All right. So we know that for our rate of change, we're always taking like f of some larger number minus f of a smaller number. That's usually how I approach this. And then we divide all of that by, you know, said larger number would go here. And this should look like a slope type of equation. And then finally, we deduct that smaller number. So the input in particular is what we deduct. Um, so I don't think this one's too bad. F of four is the larger number. So if you want to throw in some numbers here, you can do F of four minus F of one and divide that with F, or no, psych, with no Fs here. F for not listening, um, just four minus one. So F of four was 17, deducting F of one, which was eight, taking four minus one. So the difference in the X terms, 17 minus eight is just nine, four minus one is just three. So our rate of change here is three. Imagine that in front of X kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So although this seems consistent with a linear or an arithmetic sequence, we'll see what this is like with a geometric or exponential sequence in a second. All right, so now moving to an exponential function in particular. We've seen these functions before. I could look at this and know that starting at 2, I keep multiplying by 3, which is kind of nice. I mean, you don't have to do this, but it might help. But uh, we're going to pretty much do this the same song and dance as before, where it's going to be taking the output of f, where we take some larger number, some big papa, uh, so some larger number, and then minus f of some smaller number, which, you know, we're comparing one and four. So I don't know, which one do you think is going to go where? And then also taking the division and then subtracting, you know, the larger number minus the smaller one. So what do we need to get do? We need to get F of one, which is again, just plugging in where X is this number one. So two multiplying with three to the first power. It's really just two times three which is just six. So we know this part, uh, the, or no, it's like we know the smaller one. So we know this part. We also need F of four, simple enough. Two times three to the fourth power. 
which is starting with two, three cubed would be 27. And then times three again would be 81. So two times 81, which is 162. So once you have these numbers, you're golden. Notice what I did. I ne needed to evaluate where X was this number. And then in the denominator of the fraction, I just take the larger one, subtract the smaller one. I try to be consistent here, like always subtracting the smaller one. The order you do doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent with like the larger numbers are on top of each other. So uh, if we plug in 162s, some larger number, f of some larger number, and then deduct some smaller number, that's six. Take four minus one in the denominator. This is 156, and we're dividing by three, which is eventually going to be a rate of change of 52. Not 152, though. Silly y-axis getting in the way. So just positive 52. So this should help. Uh, we saw the rate of change, average rate of change for an exponential function here. And we also saw an average rate of change for an arithmetic function up here or linear, if that's your thing. Hope that this video was helpful. If you got any questions, reach out. Thanks for watching.